your initial ideas before coming to the workshop or what you have been in the first half an hour? In the first half an hour. Study. 
very simple study on how your perspectives can change. Alright? Is that, is that answer your question? Okay, right. Alright, now let's move on. Thank you so much for all the cooperation. Alright. Now, the paradigm. Maybe Ali, you just sit and listen to this first before you go. Because if you miss no, this... No, no, I already did, uh, uh, oh, okay. said to Majir. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright, now. Let me introduce just a few terms. Many of you might already know what it is. <coughs> Positivism. That, the dualism. The observer is separate from the entities that are subject to observation. That is what is called dualism. And it's a very positivist paradigm. What is a positivist paradigm? Mainly statistical researchers. Because you don't get involved. You just send out your structured uh, instruments, all right, or tests, you give tests. Then, the quali quantitative purists, that means there's still many, many, many researchers who are purists. That means this is correct, I don't believe in quantitative. Quantitative is the best because it's large numbers, I get huge amounts of data, I can inform policy making because I have such large numbers, yeah? So, um, they say that it should be objective, time and context-free and generalizable. So, they are called purists. They believe in it so much, okay? Then, on the other hand, you have the qualitative purists <coughs> who reject positivism. That means they say, no, no, what is this? You don't even know who your participants are. They say, yes, no, I agree, disagree, I strongly agree, I all the, what is all this? There's no meaning. So they reject positivism. Okay? And they think that nothing can be context free. You know, if I'm studying in UTP or and I'm and somebody else studies in UM, they're different contexts. So how can an engineering student here have the same experience as an engineering student in UM? What do you think? You can research on that. Okay? <laughs> You're welcome. I can introduce you to the engineering faculty. Okay. Then, in between is the mixed method research paradigm. Normally, we call it pragmatism. Yeah. These are all, that's positivism. I can use the pointer. Right? Right. That is positive. Oh, I was on it. <coughs> all over. 
then I just interviewed two teachers from each uh, zone in Malaysia. East Malaysia and then North, South, East, West zone in the Semenanjo in the peninsula. And I got some interviews and then it sort of explains a bit of the, the, the survey that I've given. That's all that I did. So I've got a survey and I've got some interviews. Does that make it a mixed method? Pragmatism. It's very 
pragmatic, not practical, very practical, a very practical approach to research because it informs one another, it, it strengthens one another, the qualitative and the quantitative data. Okay, so it's more for if you're looking to do some action, some by carrying out the solution. If it's purely qualitative, huh, most policy makers will not accept. Will not accept. Alright? And if it's purely positivist, people will still ask you, huh, um, did you did you find out more about this? You say that bullying uh, is is caused by can somebody tell me bullying is caused by what? Huh? Size. Sorry? Size of bullying. Size, okay. Bullying is uh, <laughs> it's related very much to the size of the bullying. Alright, okay. Then they ask, how do you know? Did you find out more? So, you know, it's still a suspect. You know, suspect. Is it true or not? But if you do some qualitative data collection, it might inform, explain. Maybe the, not only the size of the bully, but maybe the way the bully walks, you know, the, maybe the way the bully looks at you, it may all come in a package, I don't know. Right? Something like that. Okay. Okay. Yes, Raja. I was going to say, I get confused. Confused? Sorry, Larry. How about we do some experimental study of the Chemical. So, we are collecting the uh, quantitative data. For, okay, for the chem chemical aspect uh, of the research, okay. So, is it pure to quantitative or maybe we move to study? Okay, you are talking about scientific research? Alright. Scientific research mainly is positive based because you have a scientific method you put forward a hypothesis and then you come up with an experiment, you carry it out to test the hypothesis, yeah? And then you either disprove it or you prove it and then you go on to further rep you replicate the study several times to see if you get the same answers and so on. So it's very positivist, it's very, very positive. But on the other hand, it doesn't mean that, uh, like if you look at biology, when scientists do study of monkeys, uh, in, in Sarawak or Sapa, it's very qualitative. You know. Of course, they count the numbers of monkeys, the population, and all that. But it's very uh, descriptive. Maybe their habits, the yeah. daily habits, what they eat. So there is an element of qualitative research also in the hardcore sciences. It depends. You can. You can. You can. All right. Okay, don't worry, any questions we can still discuss. So I just wanted to introduce to you model and method. There is a difference. Okay? Right, then model. So what you do is, is example I gave just now, huh? you mix both approaches across the stages. Like I told you, you can do nationwide, then you go and collect data, like what I told you. Then Mixed method, each phase. Now, you ask me what is this phase thing? Okay. It can be concurrent, like what I described to you, or you may do the quantitative phase first, very quickly for one or two months. Then, as you get the results, you can do a six month quantitative study. Or, I will show you an example later, you will analyze it. You have a long qualitative study, and then as the results emerge, I think, I think we can do a follow-up quantitative study to study the population further. You know, so it's a phase, phase one, phase two, like that. So, mixed method. So what do you think is the difference between mixed model and mixed method? Just now we were talking, what's the main difference? The most uh, theses that I have corrected, uh, that's where the problem is. Students all claim this mixed method. But when it comes to the description given in the methodology. So, interview at least six months. Um, it doesn't mean okay. six months, but until saturation point. That means I can see that the effort has been taken to interview until there is no new emerging ideas. At that point of time, doesn't mean a year later you go back, tak ada idea baru. But 
So there is, you have to do it. Okay? So it's all in the time and the context that, that is qualitative and mixed method research. Okay, now this is just to, um, I'll be giving you some analysis, but this is just to highlight to you what I said just now. Ah. We have qualitative research with the objective. You can collect qualitative data, you can collect quantitative data for qualitative research. You can, like what I described. And then you can perform analysis. Or you can do quantitative research. You collect qualitative data and quantitative data, you analyze mixed model. Because the prolonged engagement is not there, but you collect some simple observation or even do a document analysis. You collect some documents and you do text analysis. It's mixed model. Okay, so I'm going to now give each of you four 
different uh, excerpts from four different theses, four different types of mixed method research. All right, so you're going to analyze each one, and then for you have, you divide your mahjong paper into four, whatever whatever form you like. You have to tell me what was the design, what were the data collection techniques, methods used, and how was the analysis done. Okay, it's now 10.25. Can we go for tea first and then come back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, that's it. Once you start, it's not. Okay? So where is tea? I don't know. Um, At the cafe. At okay. the back. Yeah. Go for tea. Uh, 10 minutes here. Yeah? We'll be back in 10 minutes. Stay there. Yeah.